Well, we're going to be talking about lunar eclipses in this video as soon as I get the uh, PowerPoint to show correctly. And we've already covered lunar phases, so I don't have to spend too much time on that, though it will be part of the discussion. And perhaps right now, this, this is not a uh, actual uh, one-frame photograph. The moon should be further away. Moon here, Earth here. But I'd ask you, where's the sun in space if we're looking at these two objects, Earth and Moon? You should be saying far off to the right, because we're getting illuminated half of the Earth, illuminated half of the Moon. And approximately what phase of the Moon then would there be? Moon is back up here, Earth is here. First quarter, first quarter Moon. When you look at the first quarter Moon, the right half is illuminated. The left half is dark. And appreciation to uh, Lunar Planetary Institute for uh, some of the slides here. Again, we have this uh, scale uh, of the Earth and the Moon. The Moon is a large distance away from the Earth compared to the sizes of the two. Again, if the Earth was a basketball, the Moon would be a tennis ball over 23 feet away. So we're talking about eclipses. This video will talk about the lunar eclipses. I think I'll do the solar eclipses in a different video. Uh, the sun and the moon uh, and earth, those three objects get to be in a straight line. Then we can have an eclipse. And the case when the moon is more distant and moves through the earth's shadow, the earth casts a shadow from uh, the sunlight that uh, is blocked by the earth. So when the moon passes through the Earth's shadow, that's a lunar eclipse. The moon casts a shadow, and if that shadow reaches to the surface of the Earth, then we can have a solar eclipse. So the sun would be covered up by the disk of the moon, and the sky would go dark, much more dramatic than the, uh, the lunar eclipses. But we have these occurring every year, the solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. Um, the solar eclipses for a particular individual are more rare. Um, we're going to talk about in a future video that the uh, uh, moon shadow is smaller than the Earth's and barely reaches to the surface of the Earth, so it's a small uh, surface area where the Sun is obscured by the disk of the moon. For the lunar case, then many, many people can see the lunar eclipse. Uh, the Earth's shadow is bigger and uh, the moon moves interior to that shadow, and uh, half of the world can see the lunar eclipse. Now, these don't happen every month. We know the moon, from our point of view, goes around the Earth once, roughly once a month, 27 days. But uh, there's not a direct alignment. So if you can look at this, uh, this drawing carefully, sun in the center, Earth at the center, you know, kind of at the center of the moon's orbit, and the moon out here. The plane of the moon's orbit is tilted by about five degrees compared to the orbit of the Earth. So as the moon goes around, um, you know, we might have full moon here, but the moon's orbit is on this tilted portion, and the moon is up above the Earth's shadow, and no eclipse occurs. Or at new moon, the moon is down below the Earth's orbit, and the moon's shadow misses the Earth, no eclipse occurs. So uh, the eclipses do not occur every month. We need a particular uh, time when we have new moon and full moon, and the moon is at this position in its orbit, where it's uh, passing up or passing down through the plane of the Earth's orbit. So it's more three-dimensional. We need these three objects to be in a straight line, and the moon's orbit is tilted, uh, such that the moon sometimes is above the Earth's orbit, sometimes the moon is down below the Earth's orbit, and that prevents us from having an eclipse every month. So, um, Earth's shadow is larger, the moon's shadow is smaller, and sometimes the moon's shadow does not reach the surface of the Earth. Why is the moon's shadow smaller? The moon is smaller. There we go. So here's a drawing of uh, a case of a lunar eclipse. The Earth is orbiting the Sun. 
from our point of view, the moon orbits the Earth. And as the moon, if we're at this particular arrangement, when the moon is uh, going through what's called a node in its orbit, a node is when the moon is on the ecliptic. Um, so being on the ecliptic, we're going to have the straight line configuration, sun, earth, moon. The objects here are not to scale compared to the distance. Sun should be smaller, Earth should be smaller, Moon should be smaller, but the orbit should be bigger. Um, so this is just a scheme of how things are operating. We get a lunar eclipse when the Moon passes through the Earth's shadow. We get a lunar eclipse when the Moon passes through the Earth's shadow. Sometimes, some months, and this would be full Moon, because you can see the Moon is on the opposite side of the Earth from the Sun. So at the phase of full moon, sometimes the moon is above the Earth's shadow, sometimes it's below the Earth's shadow, because the moon's orbit is tilted compared to the plane of the orbit of the Earth around the sun. Uh, but if it's at this node, that full moon, the moon is uh, in the ecliptic, then we can get a, a total lunar eclipse. So the dark part is the umbra, when the, uh, the dark part of the Earth's shadow there are also penumbral lunar eclipses that are more common, but hardly noticeable um, because the penumbra of the uh, Earth's shadow is not very dark. So we can go back to this. The umbra is the dark part. The penumbra is where just a portion of the sun is covered by the disk of the Earth. So we're going to get more sunlight here. It's not going to be as noticeable. Uh, not going to be dark. But here the disk of the sun is fully covered and the moon uh, does dim in its brightness. Um, we can have partial lunar eclipses where some of the moon is in the umbra and no light uh, hits the moon surface, uh, or not much light hits the moon surface. And the total eclipse is when we have uh, more of a direct passage of the moon through the ecliptic and we get the uh, sun fully blocked from the point of view of someone on the moon. We get a total lunar eclipse. The full disk of the moon is not receiving sunlight. So, who can see a lunar eclipse? Well, anyone on the surface of the Earth that can see the moon at the phase of full moon. And we have this condition of the moon being at the node, moon being at the on the ecliptic of its orbit. So, you know, that's half the Earth, potentially. So just have to be in the nighttime side of the Earth when the eclipse is taking place. So here's a photograph of a lunar eclipse. Oh, what's going on here? Uh, the moon's not dark. Why are we getting some reddish light on the moon? You have to put your thinking caps on. And we'll back up here to uh, the slide. The Earth has an atmosphere. Sunlight can go through this atmosphere. and what color of light makes it through the atmosphere the best at sunset or at sunrise? The objects look redder, the sun or the moon look redder at sunrise and sunset. And our atmosphere tends to scatter out the blue light, that's what gives us the blue sky. Red light more goes straight on through. And so some red light is being scattered onto the moon. Um, and at total lunar eclipse you can still see the moon. So uh, that's a little different, but it has a reddish color uh, because red light gets through the Earth's atmosphere and scatters onto the moon. Here's a sequence of photographs during a, a, a total lunar eclipse. Um, so we have, you know, full moon is happening, moon moving into the shadow of the Earth. So these photographs have been placed into one frame. This is not a single shot. Um, the moon moving into the Earth's shadow. And the other thing I had to notice here, the Greek obser astronomers observed, the Earth's shadow is curved. That is an indication that the Earth is a sphere. The Earth is not flat. So the Earth's shadow is curved at an eclipse. Here we're getting closer to the total eclipse, and here's our total eclipse. And again, the moon is not totally dark. You can still see it a little bit. Um, so again, why is the moon red? an eclipse. Uh, we have an atmosphere you know, roughly 35 miles thick, uh, with noticeable thickness, about 35 miles up is where meteors uh, can be observed and a little higher, but 
about 35 miles thickness of atmosphere around the sphere of the Earth. So sunlight's going through this atmosphere. The blue light is not making it through as well. Red light is making it through, and we get that uh, coloration on the moon. If there's a different amount of dust or cloud layers available, uh, more or less light will get to the moon and slightly different coloration. So uh, if you've seen one lunar eclipse, you've not seen them all because the color can change a little bit. What about some upcoming eclipses? Uh, if you're an early riser, uh, October 8, 2014, 5.30 a.m. Central Time. Uh, if you'd like to uh, be an evening observer about a year from now, this is recorded in 2014. So September 27, 2015, this will be a good one to uh, time-wise to, uh, to view. So solar eclipses, that's going to be the next video. I'm going to cut this one off here and uh, keep watching the sky.